Hey there fellow Nightscape photographers, it's Matthew Seville here in one of my favorite places in the entire American West, in my backyard here in Southern California, and it's a beautiful moonlit night out in the middle of nowhere, so this video is going to be a quick but complete guide to that classic circle in the sky star trail photo. <music> So in the Northern Hemisphere, it's getting pretty close to winter, and that means that unfortunately the Milky Way will not be visible at night for the next few months. Now I still love doing nightscape photography in the winter, and I love doing star trails. That's not just because the Milky Way is not visible, but also because the colder temperatures of the winter actually help me get better quality star trail photos. Now, the reason that is, is because of thermal noise caused by heat. The battery get, gets nice and warm and it'll cause thermal heat in the form of purple or blue blobs in the corners of your photos. And also there's another type of uh, noise that is, these are both totally different than high ISO noise, by the way. The other type of noise is called dot noise, or I call it Christmas light noise, because it's random red, green, blue dots that just show up all over your image if you're trying to shoot a long exposure on a warm or hot summer night. Now in the winter, it's, it's not freezing here, but it's getting pretty close to freezing. And so I have almost free reign of exposures from 30 seconds to one minute, two minutes, even four minutes, eight minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, or even 60 minutes. If I do a 30 minute or a 60 minute exposure, even if it was well below freezing, I would still get a few dot noise issues in my photo, but you can remove that in post-production. So for all intents and purposes, it's getting down near freezing. I can choose any shutter speed I want to do star trail photos. Now there's another factor though that goes into this, and that is if you choose to do one gigantic 60 minute exposure, if your camera battery can last that long, instead of doing shorter one minute or two minute exposures and stacking those exposures later in Photoshop, then that one hour long exposure will actually have fewer stars showing up in the photo. Now why is that if the, if the overall exposure is the same brightness at the end of the day or at the end of the night. That is because the stars are moving in the sky during the exposure. They start off, they're only in one place for a moment and then the stars slowly move. So during that one moment, the stars being, if you have a brighter ISO or a brighter aperture, the stars during that one moment will show up brighter. Whereas if you have ISO 100 and F8, the stars as they move through the sky will be dimmer or not even visible at all. The last factor that goes into deciding whether or not you're gonna do one big gigantic one hour exposure or just one minute exposures is if you do just 30 second or one minute long exposures and then stack them later in Photoshop, you may end up with tiny little blips in between the exposures in the star trail as opposed to if you had done one long one hour or two hour long exposure. And there's, there's software that can help you reduce, smooth out these little blips in between exposures but in my experience, it's, you're better off doing slightly longer exposures. So my target tonight, since I've got a lot of moonlight, is going to be to do five minute or so, somewhere in that range, long exposures. So let's decide first our aperture and our ISO based on how bright the moonlight is here in the desert. The first thing I wanna do is check my exposure and just get the exposure right. But instead of shooting a five minute exposure just to check your histogram, what you wanna do is crank your ISO way up, shoot your aperture wide open, and shoot a very short exposure like five seconds or something instead of five minutes. Then you use that to gauge your histogram and do your mental math on your fingers. My fingers are getting cold. You do your mental math to calculate back to a one minute or two minute long exposure. Now there's one quick rule of thumb that helps you there, and that is if you're shooting your test exposures at ISO 6400, any one second exposure would become a one minute exposure if you were to go down to ISO 100. 
So just remember that from 6400 to 100 ISO, you could go from one minute, I mean from one second to one minute. That also means that a two second exposure would be a two minute exposure. A five or a 10 second exposure would be a five or 10 minute exposure. So let's try for five seconds at ISO 6400 and see what aperture might work for that. And then I'll dial it back to five minutes and ISO 100. Or if that doesn't work, maybe I'll be at ISO 200 or ISO 400 in a, in a similar ballpark. So let's grab the camera and get started. All right, so I think I got this dialed in here at five seconds and ISO 6400 and my aperture is actually wide open at f4 because this is an, a slow lens, it's f4 to 5.6. It's an old Tokina lens. If you want a good new Tokina lens or any lens that's uh, this compact and lightweight for travel landscapes, and the f4 Tokina 17 to 35 is a great sharp modern lens, only a few hundred bucks and for moonlit nightscapes, landscapes, uh, star trail photos like this, F4 is actually just fine for, in fact, I'm gonna stop it down to like F8 or F5.6 and compensate. So let's do the math on this. I'm at five seconds and 6,400. As I said, if I take five seconds and turn it into five minutes, I could go down to ISO 100. But, so, okay, let's do that. Let's go all the way down here. This is how I do my math. I do it on the on the uh, camera. Well, I'm not actually dialing in five minutes, but I'm going to bulb and I'm going to set five minutes on the uh, interval timer that's going to plug into the camera. So let's do that. Then instead of ISO 100, I want two stops more aperture. So F, uh, where are we? F4, F5.6, F8. That means I'm going to go from ISO 100 to ISO 200 and 400. At ISO 400, F8 and five minutes, I should get a perfect exposure. Now, before I start rattling this off for hours and hours worth of five minute exposures, I do wanna test that just once, just to make sure that my mental math matches the histogram, the, the correct exposure that I got at ISO 6400. So let's let this rock and roll and see how it turns out. All right, it looks like this five minute exposure at ISO 400 and F8 is turning out perfect. So we're going to, I'm gonna set this up on my phone to program it to do back to back to back five minute exposures and just uh, put in a fresh battery and let it rip all night long. And that's all there is to it. Thank you all for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to the Nature TTL YouTube channel for more photography tutorials.